triple expansion steam engine that needs some attention, part 7. Various methods of cleaning the silver soldered oxidised connecting rod and changing the colour of the silver solder to match the steel base metal. My choice of weapons to do this job are many and varied, starting with a very small drum sander. The drum sander may be small, but it's capable of doing a lot of damage to the steel. To use this method successfully, you need to really control how much metal is removed. It's easy to remove the metal, but more difficult to put it back. Before I started on it, this connecting rod wasn't very well finished, and I'm hoping that after this clean-up operation, it will look much better than it did previously. It's certainly mechanically much better. I'm using this small 80 grit drum sander to reprofile the fork because the crosshead end of this connecting rod is a specific shape as you can see here. For the next part of the job I'm using a flapper wheel. This is not as aggressive as the drum sander and doesn't remove quite as much metal. This 80 grit flapper wheel is ideal for cleaning up the oxidized parts of the connecting rod. I'm still having to be careful though because 80 grit is quite a coarse abrasive. The next flapper wheel is much gentler. And this actually polishes the connecting rod and gives it a better finish. In this clip I'm using a small needle file to remove some of the marks in the shaft. This is a very tedious job and it's certainly not quick. So some viewers may be wondering, why don't I just make a new connecting rod? And yes, I may actually do that in a later episode. But it's not really the answer. If every time I came up against a problem, I just made a new part, that wouldn't be very good. A lot of the jobs I do are on very old pieces of equipment that have immense sentimental value to the owners. Most of the time, I carry out what could be called a sympathetic restoration, which really means retaining as many of the original parts as possible. The connecting rod still needs a bit more cleaning up, so once again I'm back on the flapper wheel, and as you've just seen, this is a 240 grit flapper wheel, which is quite gentle by rotary abrasive standards. As well as a small drum sander and a couple of flapper wheels, I also used the wire brush. The wire brush was very useful for getting right into the corners. The connecting rod is starting to look better. I haven't drilled the mounting holes for the big end brasses, there's a reason for that that I will explain in another episode. I'm hoping this repair will be successful, I certainly think it will be. All I need to do now is throw away the horrible base part, the piece with the holes randomly drilled in it. The only problem though is the silver solder is not silver, it's actually a brass type colour. I think it's time for a top tip. It's top tip time. To get rid of this colour mismatch between the silver solder and the steel there are a few things I could do. I could paint it. I could electroplate it using silver. Alternatively I can use this very quick and simple method. All I need is some electrical solder, a small blowtorch and something to rest the work on. On the bench is one of the bricks from my brazing hearth. This is a pot of ordinary water, and I have a small paintbrush at the ready. Here's the principle. I heat up the work to melt the solder. The flux that's in the solder spreads the solder on the silver soldered part. And while the solder on the part is still molten, I brush it away using the paintbrush with a drop of water on it. I would recommend using some extra flux, by the way. This is commercial plumber's solder flux. And I'm going to apply this with the same paintbrush that I'm dipping into the water. By using this extra flux on the paintbrush it allows me to spread the solder a bit further. But I need a bit more flux than you've just seen me apply. This is the amount of flux that I used in the end. Which really spread out and flattened the solder. I moved on to the fillet of silver solder which holds the fork onto the rod. And once again the same principle. It's the application of the correct amount of heat and the flux water mixture that makes the solder spread. It's very important to make sure you synchronize this job. You must not point the blowtorch at the work when the brush is there. After the soft soldering job, there's a bit of staining, but this is easily removed. I let the part cool for a while and then dropped it in a pot of water to make it so I could handle it. To clean up the solder, a wire brush is a good idea, but I really hate this type of wire brush. You must wear eye protection when you use these. I don't want to go too fast with this because all that happens is the bristles fly out and stick in my shirt. And this gets more irritating as the day goes on. Once I'd used the wire brush it was down to wet to dry sandpaper wrapped around a needle file. Although after this I did use the polishing spindle to get a really good finish. 
I didn't want the part to be polished and very shiny. Steam engine connecting rods are generally not polished. I obtained the final finish by using some Scotch Brite. You may be thinking, well, that's not a very good finish, but then again, you haven't seen the other two connecting rods on the engine. It's important not to lose track. At the moment, this is a sympathetic restoration as I mentioned earlier, not a full rebuild. Very shortly, I will be fitting this connecting rod to the big end brasses. Then I will try it back on the engine and see if it fits. At the moment on this engine, the crankshaft is not in the correct position. What I'm doing at the moment is planking a baseboard. This is not part of this series at all. It's part of a series called Building a Stuart Model Steam Plant, and I've already done this once, but the baseboard warped, so it was scrap. The piece of wood that I'm planking is 9-ply, 18mm plywood, and I don't think that this baseboard's going to warp at all. Just in case you're interested, I'm using mahogany planking with cyanoacrylate adhesive, also known as super glue or CA glue, and this is the medium viscosity variant. This piece of steel that I'm using is the boiler mounting plate, and I'm using it as an extension to the spring clamps to hold the mahogany planking in place. And that's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.